as the weather is horrible outside and I can't take any of the new ones out to show you, this one, which is garage bound, seems like a good one to start with. It's my 1973 Rover P6 V8. I've had it for about 10 years and it started life as a company car for a typewriter carbon copy material manufacturer, which I don't think is even a thing anymore. And it was given to me by the son of a man who'd parked it up when the brakes failed and sadly he fell ill shortly afterwards and passed away. But his son wanted the garage back, didn't want the car to be broken for parts, and so he said anyone could have it who was willing to um, have a stab at restoring it. And I was that fool. Um, I didn't get a great look at it in the garage where it was because it was very, very stuck. The brakes were completely seized on and it almost pulled the brake down truck over when it tried to winch it out sideways. But we freed the brakes off, got a look, thought the sills were probably okay till we got it to a workshop and found out they needed complete new sills, new inner arches, front and rear, complete new braking system and a big service just to get it through an MOT. When I got the car it was Corsica Blue, um, which is a Met Police colour, almost. I was going to keep it that original colour, but I'd always wanted a black P6, and there's no argument about how many of those were originally built, but it's a car that really does suit black paint. And so as I went through the car and found rust in most of the panels, and had to paint them anyway, it seemed a perfect opportunity to get the car I've always really wanted. Then it ran kind of okay, it's that good old Rover Buick 215 V8, the 3.5 litre, but it was never putting out the power I thought it should, and it was so unreliable. I was pretty sure the car hated me. One time the smoke came out of the glove box, it broke down so many times that I, with first name terms, the local AA repair guy. Eventually, I decided the old 3.5 litre V8 was not up to the job. So about 18 months ago, I pulled the engine out and um, bought a new camshaft, new timing gear, because that's where we decided the problem must be. Um, but then, halfway through stripping down that 3.5 litre, thought, this engine's just garbage, it doesn't like me. I went online and found, for cheap, a 4.6 Range Rover engine, which is the same block, um, so it bolts straight into the car. Of course, that didn't quite go as, as well, taking it apart as I planned, and that escalated from a quick 300 pound slap in a camshaft and timing gear to a slightly more expensive full rebuild, which you'll see in the next video, or the beginnings of anyway. Um, so hopefully, when this goes back on the road later in the year, this will have a 4.6 litre completely built engine, which will be very nice indeed. Of course, that will lead to two more problems. Firstly, it will destroy the gearbox the first time I put my foot down, and as soon as I fix the gearbox, it will destroy the differential, because neither of those two things are strong enough to take the power of a 4.6. We'll come to that problem later though. More immediately, before I put this back on the road, I did find the last time I drove it that the brake master cylinder um, connecting rod to the pedal came through the bulkhead and wouldn't go back in again, which made stopping quite interesting. Um, so yeah, that needs to be addressed before I take it anywhere else ever again.